Welcome back to Hudat, and I'm here with the lovely Bodin. Hi. And as you know, Hudat, we we like to uh, go through the, the history of um, these Bohemian artists of how they got into the business of both. Tell me the very very first moment you knew you loved music. I was in music class at Kingsway Academy. Cornelia Lightborn, she's my music teacher. We had um, something to learn. One English song. My grandfather's clock was too large for the shelf, so she's teaching it to us, and she's teaching it in parts. And that's when I came to love English, the way that they open their mouths and they speak and, you know, present music. And then there's the cultural activities at the school, then there's the church activities. So all of them together, all of them combined. But my very first record of music loving and performance is in music class. So when you, after music class, who you used to uh, compare yourself to was like, I want to sing like her, or who, or, or him? Who? You know, it's so funny. Um, well, I'm an 80s baby, first mm. of all, 1983. So 89 by, I think like 92, I was in, I don't even remember which grade. I just know I was at Kingsley Academy and we were rapping. Mm -hmm. So there was, um, not really Roger because she's MC Light. And then who's this? Um, I'm a rapping den and then I came to say drugs can affect you in a negative way and I must be body I, I, and a clog like your Bodine, mind she, in the race of life she you rap. fall behind drugs are wrong drugs are wrong somebody did a song along that line so you know it's those artists that I started rapping mm -hmm. I mean I, this is something I did not know this is what who that is for <laughs> so who that is for Bodine was a rapper first yeah I yeah I was a rapper first and then you should see me inside church right because we'd have a youth choir and you know like our pastor at Commonwealth Baptist Church, which is where I grew up, he, he started this rap and it's called the Power Time Rap, right? So you should see me, I in the choir and it's the only time I pay attention in church, no hope. And I can't on bad, you know? I can't on bad. So he gave me one opportunity and that's all I needed, okay? I got like this. In the last days, the Bible declared, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Old men will see visions, young men will dream dreams, you know? And I teach that to my kids I'm, in class. I'm, I'm enjoying this Listen so much. To me. <laughs> Listen, I used to kill a hip hop, um, very first winner of the Bahamas at Sunrise hip hop competition, female, or oh, y'all watch the gun fingers though. It's only the fingers, right? Female, you know, a lot of people, they kind of had an issue, you know, with that, but you don't come to a rap battle without knowing who your opponents are. So you hit them, you hit them where it hurts. Um, other than that, Dunamis Sounds, I worked along with Manifest, you know, he mentored me, we had a lot of studio sessions. First recorded single was called My First Love under the name J83 Blaze and then from there um, it was Buffu Records and I was kind of with um, the Beach Act prior to doing the sounds but not as an artist I used to do a lot of that stuff I was like a studio rap right. you know when you sit down and yeah, absorb uh, you just absorb everything you know somebody making um, a beat on the MPC player you know and you just there yeah you know everything dark and you just say yeah yeah, yeah you're in the zone you know, in the zone but that was like my late teens early 20s then there's buffu records with frontline productions and um i hadn't done anything in a long time so between that hiatus because gospel wasn't for me mm -hmm. you know a lot of people know me as a gospel singer but um it's something that i i think it's very personal so that's my personal thing um and Performance wise, I didn't connect with it. So they didn't understand when I made the transition over to secular music. Why? Because I have a better connection with it. Mm. A better connection with uh, honest feelings. The passion and will come out. Yeah, honest feelings and expressions. I, I just felt that gospel was a bit, um, it, it used to confine me a bit with what I wanted to express and the way I wanted to express it. So with secular music, I could say exactly what it is that I'm feeling without actually having to oh, be like, oh, I can't sing that in church. You know what I mean? Mm. So. That, and I appreciate that like, some people would they wouldn't no I'm very honest when it comes down to what I feel and what I believe I'm incredibly honest and it, it kind of works for me and then it kind of works against me because professionally yeah of course. you know professionally some people can't handle it they yes. have their own personal ideologies that everybody has to fall in line with otherwise you know the, the world is gonna crumble and then you have others that recognize well this is who she is this is what she does so let me leave it because it's working um, so Buffalo records you know, we did the copycat record, you know, or the copycat rhythm. Um, and that was one. I love you. All right. You're my man and my friend, the beginning and then. Then you did good loving and then a number of other like little 
ratchet dancehall tracks that I did because you know this is the hip hop meets the reggae and the jazz that kind of stuff and um, you know it's been blossoming since then so hip hop to jazz and poetry to jazz and poetry in reggae to more like my Bahamian Caribbean Carmen Miranda Therese Hepburnish, mm -hmm. you know kind of personality that's coming out right now mm -hmm. and I feel most comfortable here so tell us, because you just had, you had a huge year, about that year, about 10 months, 11 months. How <laughs> much Agnew Carnival? Tell us about that. Oh my from, goodness. From that, and making the song, because like we talked when you actually submitted the song, mm -hmm. um, making the song, entering the song, becoming a finalist to the whole, becoming the top 10 to the final, like, take it to the whole experience. Well, let me tell you, this experience actually starts for me maybe two years prior to this. Before I took my hiatus, I said to my producer, Ray, and, you know, Nick Barnes from Frontline Productions, I said, y'all, Especially when I did Intoxicated, which was many years ago. Like I said, yeah, I, from then I was like, y'all, I'm hearing something. And I think that the direction that music is going to go into is like that Caribbean, fusion. African fusion sound. I think that's the direction I want to go into, you know. And, um, you know, things kind of just dwindled off a little bit. So you fast forward to about last year and you have this opportunity for Bahamas John Canoe Carnival. And... You know, I'm like, I should try this. I think, you know, I should do this even. It should just be fun. So, you know, I spoke with my producer, Rick Carey. I said, listen, I want to do this, but this is what it is. So we came to an agreement on how we wanted to get it done. And so I'm working with Rick Carey, um, C Sharp Productions, and he starts to play this, you know, just something that he puts together. And the way he works is so fascinating because he loves something and it'll sound like something that's finished to go to the mm. studio. But when he starts to work on it, then you hear all of the elements. So he's one of those persons that could produce something for you to be on stage. And you have the stamps and it's just beautiful. So he starts playing it, right? And all of a sudden I hear all day, all night, just automatically it just drop in there. Writing the verses was a bit different, but I was like, you know what? You know, it's a junk canoe, it's a carnival. So you have, you could be junk canoe-ish, but you could be so ish so I can just take it straight ratchet. Mm -hmm. just, you know, just straight it, ratchet. It, it makes sense, the half and anything. Always, no. Always go full. Right. Always go full. And I think that's what people enjoyed about the song because you get the feeling of junk canoe. You know, you get that, the, all of the elements like in the music. And, right, junk canoe. And then you get the, the soca, which is the complete freeing type of situation. That's why I tell you, tell me who could stop me from yucking up my body or from jucking up my body. I drink it and I likely to shut this place right down. And then this music got me high, beat that not drum board. Not to cut you off, but uh -huh. this, now, I, now it makes sense why I saw something like that because you told me how you used to rap. I, you was like, you was flowing and all day all night, right? So I was saying, it's like, that's the reason why I like it so much because how you, your inflection, how you did it flow, it's like, now it makes sense. You come from a hip hop background. Thank so you, you know? It makes complete sense why I love that song so much. I am so happy that you love it yes, and that you, yes, yes, yes. So, and, when I thought about it, I was like, okay, so the performance, right? I want one big juicy gal on the stage. I needed to be juicy. I needed to be on the stage, right? Because I want, listen, when I did in my head the show map for this, like if I had a full on 15 minute set with two songs to perform and how I wanted to break it down, I said, yeah, I can see it. Because I have to see a piece of music before I finish recording it. Um, the minute I hear it, I have to be able to see the visuals for it because that's the only way I'm able to. If I can't see a visual, for me, it's not going to be a hit. I have to connect with it on all different levels. All levels. All levels. So by the time the, the video is finished, being produced, we know exactly what it's supposed to look like. Um, so, you know, when I did the photo shoot for Junk New Carnival in the pasted dress, everybody's like, and that was me trying to mesh everything together and I started to work on the visuals for that show from the moment we started the song. So the night that they actually said who made the top 25, right? Nick and I are in the room and I'm hyperventilating because for some strange reason, I don't think of myself as one of those persons that should make it all the way to the top. I just, I'm just doing it just because I can. It's not, I'm not catty, I'm not, one of I'm competitive, but I don't. I'm not the traditional version of competitive. I do it because it's me. Mm -hmm. I want to do it. So I'm hyperventilating. Then you hear my name, and I'm like, oh, lay out in the bed. Then we get to Freeport, and the people in Freeport are awesome. Like, honestly, Jason I, I, Moxie. I really wish I could have went to that trip. I it was awesome. Yeah, we had a good time. You had a whole lot of personal time to yourself. They didn't treat us like we were 
you know, part of a reality show, so they didn't give us a set itinerary, which some people could deal with and some people can't. Personally, I like not having um, every minute of my time. The, the media runs yeah. and all that. No. Like, where do you need me to be? Okay, I'm going to be there. But just don't dictate to me what I'm supposed to be doing. I can't take it. Um, so they gave us a lot of time to do whatever it is that we needed to do. They told us when sound checks were, and everything didn't go according to plan. But at the same time, um, the Freeport family was so supportive. And um, even though they stood there, like, I feel like you could have just given them theater seating mm -hmm. and let everybody watch. And then they could have gotten up and, you know, they would have clapped. That's how I felt about it. Because they gave me an audience watching, especially if it's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. So that was good. And they called the ninth person. And I walk in back because I can't breathe again. Like, I'm there, and I'm like, <gasps> like, I'm reading D-Mark was waiting to get on stage, and he said, boy, relax your nerve, man. I said, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Now, oh, tell me. Time. Right. Call my name. Ah! <laughs> Happy. What? Freaking running in my bathing suit. Mind you, I didn't know my bathing suit would make me look that juicy on TV, because mm -hmm. I'd look juicy. Mm -hmm. Like, when I saw the video, I was like, that's how I look. Oh, my God. <laughs> All your students. Listen, well, see, let me tell you what I love about my students. My students have not said anything disrespectful. They weren't disgusting. You know, they say, Miss Johnson, we see you. I say, yeah, try it in my class. <laughs> <laughs> Before you say anything else? Yeah, try it in my class. So, you know, they still perform. They do what they're supposed to do, but they're respectful. And I think it says something about the mindset of the children that we have now. They're more exposed, so they know how to separate, you know, performance from actual professional. professional and I think that that's a good thing because it says that you can do more than just um, one or the other I can come to work you can see me on the beach and you don't talk my business you know what I mean so good job LW on Eagles good job all right but other than that we fast forward to um, the, May, the week May 8th yeah May 8th we fast forward to May 8th I want you to know that I taught and I did not leave school until 2 o'clock on the day of May the 8th. I got Rio Georgina to make my um, bodysuit because I wanted something that was carnivalesque but I didn't want to look like a gimmick. I wanted to look... You want to be comfortable with the performance? Yeah, you know, I didn't want to I didn't want to put on a whole shoulder piece and a whole head piece because then it would be too gimmicky for me. I wanted it to be more of a match between what it could be. So we did the sequence and we did the, the tassel so you see the movement and um, also the bathing suit. That's what it was about, being able to translate those experiences. So we fast forward to May 8th, you know, and I'm teaching until two o'clock and everybody on the campus looking at me like, why are you here? I say, well, you know, I got to do the government job. I taught my classes on Thursday. I was on campus, I did what I had to do because I didn't get any time off for, for anything. And then, you know, I did my hair, showed up the night of. Backstage, it ain't time to go on stage yet. Why are these people playing long, eh? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, that's what it was. Shout out to Georgina, though. Georgina Ward with me. Mm -hmm. Man, me and I had the backstage for chalks. Mm -hmm. was, you know, one behind the other. So we get on stage. Georgina finishes set. We get called up. Um, they cut our song short, right? But I'm not going to lie. Ting on them band. Like, when you're on the stage and you I see did. this big stage and you see them thousands of people out there and you hear the live band or whatever. If I had 10 minutes on the stage, that party was over, over. If we did the set, I practiced, that party was Finish. over. They took us from five minutes to three minutes because we were so behind schedule. I want you to know I was on a high. Makiva and Paige shut that down. I have to shout them out anytime I get a chance because they are excellent on the stage. The two dancers, mm -hmm. killers, killers. And Makiva was a student of mine as well. So she's now like a little sister to me. Nice. So I'm hearing everybody's performance and everybody sounds good. And I'm like, okay, yeah. My you dance. know? No, but I, it ain't even just a my time kind of situation. It. It's just, you know, I'm ready for the stage and whatever happens, happens. Because I'm quite sure they would have had everybody's, um, they would have known who would have scored higher mm -hmm. from the time they left the judging room. So, let's say if your score was way up in the air and you didn't do so well in Freeport, guess what? You still have a chance there. You could have fallen anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then some people picked up points. 
a lot of people don't know how the competition was scored so I'm like okay well you know this one here their writing is more nationalistic this one here this would be crazy you know I listen honestly I wasn't expecting to make top five I was just there I'm like yeah I can shut it down to be honest with you, I was like when I saw it here and the people who I thought was gonna win so low as I go it's like holding when I was like this guy's coming to this or oh, holding me. All the songs, all my personal favorite songs before the competition, uh -huh. other than yours, mm. were like in the bottom five. So it's like, oh, flip, holding win. <laughs> right here, number four. I like, Jesus. Well, I wasn't even disappointed. I was happy. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, I was happy because my expectation, and I don't know if some people may translate this to the defeatist attitude. If I was doing this to win, then I would have been disappointed. I was doing it because I can't. So because you have the ability to. Yeah, I have the ability to, you know, and I wanted people to see what I can do. And it was an opportunity for me to show people what my branding is going to be like. And that's what it was for me. It wasn't, oh, body and go in. And people saying that, you know, and I'm like, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your, your belief in me. But right now, I'm just trying to get on stage. I want to go on stage. I want to go on stage. That's all I want to do. I wanted to go on the stage. So they call me fourth and I'm very happy, you know, because prior to that era, because, you know, she antsy, because she was very competitive. She wants to win, you know, and so she hugs me and I'm like, yay. And then they call my name and I'm like, yay. I go there and I'm trying to figure out when I see all the other trees get their big check. I say, so where my big check? <laughs> you know, but it's okay, you know, because I think the it's like, where my big check? You know, I want one too. Yeah, I want one too. I want to put it up on my wall. I don't get a big check. This is three. <laughs> Can I have my big check for you? Please just put it over gold. I just, I, I ain't gonna lie, I know y'all can find it in there. Can I have a big check please? Just say that I didn't get a thousand dollars. But after that, um, I've had people booking, booking me for, for different events and shows and then my single push, it skyrocketed after this as well. And I think it's because when I write music, I write it to give people a feeling of accomplishment or a feeling of freedom or a feeling of being able to just do whatever they want to a feeling of empowerment a feeling of happiness sometimes I write and I make people really sad so I try not to do that because mm -hmm. <laughs> trust me when I make them sad I make them sad, sad. <laughs> low yes. low low oh, low it's low 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 um, but other than that the experiences have been wonderful the children in the corridor. Miss Johnson, all day. I say, y'all study all, all day. day. <laughs> Exams all day, you know, all night. I was so happy. I, When you're on the stage, you can't hear the people. You could only hear the band because the, the monitors are facing you. Mm -hmm. But somebody had to tell me, Bodine, you had the entire crowd out there singing all day, all night. I say, I couldn't hear them. Say no when you tell them louder, everybody is a roar in the crowd. It's like, I'm like, oh my goodness, everywhere that I've sung that song after that, everybody's just bouncing. Mm, yeah, you know, the junk new bounce, and that's what I want them to do. I want them to have a wonderful time. I don't want you to be too serious, I want you to just, you know, don't let any troubles keep you down. That's what the bridge is about. Rick and I went back and forth about that bridge, by the way. Mm -hmm. I was like, Rick, we need to do this twice. You probably need to do this more than twice. And he's like, no, we need to get to the jump, lift your leg apart. I'm like, no, Rick. I ain't telling no lie. I have a feeling about this, this. And no lie, when I tell you I have a feeling about something, it's be right. So the two of us had it down to a science. Ain't no trouble's gonna keep me down. And you put that in a nice slow melody. So then everybody starts to feel like they need to cool down. And you feel like you stress out from the rest of the world. Ain't no troubles. Like you being in the shock all night. You can't see left from right. <laughs> you don't know what color your costume is. Mm -hmm. No more because you're that tired. Right, right, right. right? And you hit bay and you start to hear the drums. Ain't no trouble gonna keep me. Your baby mother just leave you. Ain't no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just those type of things that people experience. And so then you get that hype. You know, you hit bay and you're the hype. Everybody jump, lift your leg. You know, mm. you, it, it's a building and it's a progression and it's a reminder that you could do whatever it is that you want to do. Before that you go here, two things. I want you to let people know um, where to find you. Mm -hmm. And the week before, when I was at Carnival, when we had the press conference, you said something, if you could just remember pieces of that speech you made. You mean about the new generation? Yes, um, and just tell it to the camera. I okay, appreciate that. no problem. You see, I am my African friend, right? Mm -hmm. I made this. Oh, 
long time. Thanks. Not the night first though. I got this from the British Virgin Islands. Okay, what's the first thing again? Where people can find you. Okay. Well, everybody, you can find me on YouTube at BE242, Facebook dot com slash BE242 or slash Bodine Victoria, Instagram, Bodine Victoria, Twitter at BE242. I'm Bodine and I support Bahamian culture. I'm looking forward to the day when we have a new generation of Bahamian icons, those kids that perform and they are happy to make a living off of being professional performers the way that Therese Hepburn and the way that the one and only Exuma the Obear Man did, the way that Joseph Spence did, the way that Eloise Lewis and Maureen the Valia did, becoming cultural icons for the Bahamas, exporting what we have to the world and being happy to do it. So, let me let y'all know, more music coming, all day, all night, and more. That is all. This has been Who That? <laughs>